Oh, his file name is Fine, Seymour P, or Seymour Fine, or his initials SF for sci-fi. <laughs> yeah, I see what you did there, Larry Hammer. Form BX57 here bringing you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'll be taking a look at the G.I. Joe team's second laser rifle trooper, the 1986 Sci-Fi. Now Sci-Fi makes his first comic book appearance in the old Marvel comic run of G.I. Joe in issue 64, which is basically just a background cameo. He makes a fuller appearance in issue 65 where he is actually named. He makes his first animated appearance in the Sunbow animated G.I. Joe cartoon, 1986 season opener, five-part Arise, Serpentor, Arise, in part one. And sci-fi is better known for two things. One, his laid-back attitude, and two, his very, very bright uniform. And boy, is it ever bright. But first, we'll take a look at his accessories. He comes with what's called an XH-86 LLOM beam laser rifle. As you can see, it had a little peg on the bottom there. And Sci-Fi comes with a standard G.I. Joe hose attachment here, which is about six inches long. And attaches to his power source backpack. You'll notice the uh, nubbins on the side there. As a matter of fact, on the a barrel of the laser rifle. There are a few little indents here. <laughs> they're very slight, but they're there. And that means that you can attach the uh, laser rifle's barrel onto the backpack, Ghostbuster style. Either facing up or down, it doesn't matter. It fits well either way. While I like the orientation of the backpack the way it is here, I'm not really sure exactly which direction it's actually supposed to go in. If you take a look at the this little portion here, right before the actual back peg, this is normally sculpted so that it's uh, flush with the back of the uh, figure's sculpt. But as you can see, it doesn't fit this way. And if you point it downwards like this, it doesn't fit this way either. And I've actually seen quite a few people actually put it in this direction. Meaning that the pegs are on the left side, so you can have a left-handed sci-fi if you want. However, according to the Sumbo Animation Style Guide, it is actually supposed to be pointing upwards. Okay, I suppose I have to address the elephant in the room, and that is Sci-Fi's really, really bright color scheme. He has a great sculpt underneath this, but the color scheme is the one thing which turns a lot of people off, and I, I just can't excuse that. Because while I understand what they were going for, Hasbro wasn't going for a futuristic soldier. They were going for a classic science fiction look. Sort of a late 70s, early 80s type of a look here. And that's where the bright colors actually come from. Especially when you think about his silver accents. The framing around his helmet and his chest and his belt buckle makes sense. But why does he have silver boots? That's because that, that's a kind of a classic throwback to those early 1950s and 60s astronauts. Uh, which actually had, you know, silver astronaut suits and silver boots. That's that's kind of where his space boots kind of come from. And that's the other thing I'd like to address is, underneath that kind of ugly color scheme, he does have a great sculpt. 
I just love the way they did his helmet. I mean, if you can imagine this in uh, more, I guess, subdued military colors, this would still look great. This would look great today, much less back in 1986, where it should have had a more subdued look. But again, that's the color scheme that they went for to evoke a more classic uh, science fiction look. Because, I mean, look at the other characters that they released in the same year. Beachhead and Lowlight are very subdued, very realistic. And yet he doesn't even look like he's in the same, it doesn't even look like he's in the same series, much less part of the same team. But that's what they were going for. They were really going for that um, almost, you know, almost Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon type of a look here. Speaking of the helmet, if you take a good look at the portion right underneath the black visor, there are these tiny silver, almost like chin guard-like pieces. Now, it's not depicted what this is supposed to be, but on the modern version of the sci-fi action figure, they actually speculated that those actually were meant to be black and slid out and covered the rest of his face. I kind of wonder whether that was a prototype idea or perhaps something which was supposed to be engineered, perhaps with their, like a removable helmet or something at some point, but was just sort of sculpted in here. Another very interesting sculpting addition is what exactly are in his thigh pockets here? I tend to think that they're spare magazines for his laser rifle, just sort of tucked in there. Even though his backpack is supposed to be his power source, uh, I'd expect this to be something that might overheat or wear out, so he keeps some extra parts on himself. Now, I do have to admit, sci-fi is really not an action figure which I put front and center on any of my displays. He is really either a background figure or I tend to use his bright colors um, to place on the deck of the aircraft carrier as one of those guys who signals, uh, signals planes for uh, takeoff and landing. Sci-Fi is the second laser rifle trooper in the G.I. Joe line. Just to sort of remind you that G.I. Joe was a futuristic line with weapons that were ahead of their time being given to the G.I. Joe team. And this is a 1982 and 83 Flash. Now, as you can see, Flash actually does have a somewhat more subdued color scheme, barring, of course, the orange padding, which, of course, makes a bit more sense because, you know, it's hazard padding. It should be um, bright, and, or at least it's, it's excusable as a, a bright color on his otherwise military green outfit. So I know it's a little hard for people to, uh, to think that we go from something that's realistic to something that's totally unrealistic, and yet they're sort of the same uh, area of expertise. Another very interesting thing when comparing the two is Flash's weapon is a much more utilitarian looking, cobbled together looking device here. It looks more like a laser welder or laser torch, which is granted exactly what lasers are doing today. Handheld lasers do not look like assault rifles, which is kind of what sci-fi's weapon kind of looks like. Very interesting though is that when you see old depictions of Flash uh, either in the comic books or in other media, he is holding something which looks a bit more recognizable as a laser rifle. So it's actually kind of funny that he really probably should have come with something which looks like sci-fi's weapon and not what he actually did get. Another very interesting thing is his weapon is called the XMLR-1A shoulder fire laser rifle. And 1983 Snowjob came with an XMLR-3A laser rifle. So it's actually kind of unfortunate that we didn't get the um, continuation of that 
for the naming of this weapon. Instead, we got something which uh, is very long, very complicated, and uh, quite frankly, I don't know what any of it uh, actually stands for. Now, underneath the crazy color scheme, undeniably, Sci-Fi has a great sculpt. While his head is a bit large, it's forgivable because of the helmet sculpt. It is rather detailed. But he has all kinds of other nice little things like pouches, which are filled, and elbow pads, which are sculpted in, but not, unfortunately, uh, uh, painted in. And, of course, that breastplate, which really evokes a sort of a very tough, almost bulletproof-like chest padding. However, I do have to say, we go from the subdued look of the original Flash to sci-fi, and then to sci-fi's second version, which, well, we go straight back to a subdued color scheme again, black with gray, with very tiny hints of yellow for the sort of pop that Hasbro generally put on their um, uh, paint schemes for their figures. And I know a lot of customizers really love sci-fi sculpt, because I often see him with either Flash's color scheme painted on him or his second version painted on him. It's really easy just to swap his colors out and really give him a different look. So just who is the opposite number for sci-fi on the Cobra side? Well, I thought about it and I think the 1987 Techno Viper fills that role. And while a Techno Viper is a battlefield technician, Besides being a laser rifle trooper, Sci-Fi has to have electronic engineering background and probably also a bit of mechanical as well. Now I know what you're thinking. Cobra actually does have a direct laser rifle trooper in the form of the 1990 Laser Viper. However, I don't think that these two go together well as rifles because as a 1990 figure, I just think the timeline is too late. If you're going to pair up a Laser Viper against any of the G.I. Joes, you might as well just pair them up against the 1991 version of Sci-Fi instead. If you're trying to find a Sci-Fi on the aftermarket, he is really easy to find, and you should find him for fairly cheap. He's also fairly easy to find in job lots of figures to sort of mash together in photographs because he really does stand out. However, there is one thing that you should look out for, and that is the peg on his backpack. It's really easy to crack off, and of course, in photographs, it's really hard to see whether or not that peg is cracked off or not because of all the detail that's surrounding it. But that's the only thing that you should really be looking out for. Sci-Fi is, of course, a laser rifle trooper. He, he actually holding something which looks a bit more recognizable as a weapon rather than... And I know a lot of customizers actually love Sci-Fi because it's actually rather easy to... 
Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.